So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Jariah. Hello. And we're going to ask him some questions today about his new EP, A Beginner's Guide to Faking Your Death. I'm going to start. Uh, so congrats on that. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Um, completely floored, honestly. <laughs> like... I feel like I say this every time, but like nothing could have possibly prepared me for it to be what it has been. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's been really great. That's good. I mean, granted, your music has just gotten progressively better, but also your oh, yeah. numbers have just, they've gotten bigger every single Sky time. Release week. Yeah. Just keep, you, you tweet and you're like breaking a personal record every single time. Exactly. I'm like, you're not How the stopping. fuck does that happen? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> i'm always like okay well last time it did like this much better than the time before so i think if we could just like replicate that and it'll always be like 10 times more than what i thought mm -hmm. and i'm like i i don't like i keep telling cole like we just got to stop trying to make predictions for mm -hmm. release day because it just doesn't mean anything yeah yeah, yeah. that's fair uh, so is there any meaning behind the album name or cover art wait is it an album or ep because i count it as an album it is an ep gotcha are you serious I, highly debated but it is officially an ep it's an ep yes wow okay well how do you <laughs> is there any meaning behind the ep name or cover art it's if it it's like okay interesting interesting yeah, yeah. i mean we can talk about the ep thing if you want <laughs> i would i would love to actually why do you consider it an ep why are you dubbing it as an ep okay so the main thing for me is like well, there are two main things one of them is like the length of it i just feel like it's like less than half an hour and it's like that just doesn't feel like a record to me okay you no know, at least not like for what i think of as a record i think like a record could be anything but okay for like what i want to do like 25 or like 30 minutes just feels a little short mm -hmm. and also because there is an lp2 that's been in the works since before this was even started oh and so it's like on my whiteboard and all my like stuff like that's album too so everything yeah. in between has just been a long campaign in order to make that album the biggest thing in the world basically <laughs> okay okay right. i respect that i respect that a lot actually that makes sense that makes sense uh so is there any meaning behind the ep name or cover right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um it's uh there is surprising it's um it's like a story basically it's um it's a concept record mm -hmm. and a beginner's guide to faking your death basically is um i guess just like a play on the themes of it which is like you have this main character who fakes his death and runs away from everything mm -hmm. and has to deal with all of the the fallout of that and figuring out like where he stands in everybody's lives and wondering you know what exactly is he leaving behind and like what's ahead mm -hmm. and i thought it would it'd be really fun to sort of frame that as like um like a guy like almost like a ned's declassified kind of thing mm -hmm. as, as in like you know like i don't really know what's going on but like here's you know like an instructional <laughs> type thing I yeah guess. all right okay that makes sense um so how did the track list come about for the ep did you like spend hours putting it together or did you just kind of press shuffle and that's what came about um that's a good question the um yeah the questions are getting hard since last, time. <laughs> <laughs> last time i was like yeah what's your favorite color <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so this the track list was mm -hmm. um a very very long time in the making because it grew and changed a lot um mm -hmm. some of the songs originally weren't on here it, it originally was supposed to be um just a couple of songs it was going to be debt collector crows that, that actually was going to be one project on its own and everything kind of grew from there because once i mm -hmm. finished pace because debt collector and, and crows i kind of put on the back burner for a while because i wanted them to, like you know i wanted to do a video for debt collector which we did and crows you know felt like it needed a lot of work so they were on the back burner for a while while i was you know doing stuff like split and knives and when change of pace came about that was something i started at the same time as Debt Collector and Crows. And I realized, like, without realizing that they were all connected, like, narrative-wise, and I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> that's, like, that's almost an EP right there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I think by the time we like reached the point where we were releasing Debt Collector, in my head, I already formulated like a whole thing. Um, same with Bad Luck. That happened like way last year and it almost didn't get made at all. Wow. Um, oh. So when we reached like here, I was like, wait a second. That's also part of the story. Um, and then the main thing that happened really is that we pushed it back a bunch of times. We had mm-hmm. just ran out of time. And every time we pushed it back, I'd like add a couple more stuff. <laughs> okay. So it just the project yeah. kept on growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right. Interesting. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about your writing process for this EP? Mm, writing process. <laughs> I don't even know. I just I mean... want you to know that Glory has album on the on the question list instead of EP. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I've changed. I've flipped the entire thing on its head. Let's go. I like changing the title right now. <laughs> Please don't. Oh my god, I wouldn't do that to you. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Writing process. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of it um was honestly just trying to make songs I like. Like I know that sounds like really obvious, but um I so I guess going back to the whole LP thing, I've been working on the LP since um 2018, since like fall of that year. And okay. I think I reached the point with this year where I was like, one, I really, or last year, I was like, I really want to take a break from this. Like it's it's getting kind of exhausting. Um, And just like, I was kind of growing out of it. You know, the Mm -hmm. idea, honestly, it was like, I think I need to take some time to like write some more music that's not part of this world. Mm -hmm. Cause I get like really into like worlds. And once I start on an idea, I'll stay in it for like a few years. And that would like be the thing that inspired everything. So I got really exhausted of it. And then it was supposed to be about a pandemic and then a real pandemic happened. And I was like, I really don't want to write this. Unless you predicted it. It's all your fault. Hi, I'm just going to say that the story was very similar to what happened. And I Uh never wrote the last song. And I just feel like if I had written the last song, maybe things would be different. I don't know. Dude, you need to write the last song so you can end the pandemic. (laughs) Come on. I mean, I had an idea. It was not a good ending. I'm not going to lie. So maybe maybe it's good then, Maybe don't write that. Then. <laughs> yeah. But I got really tired of it. So I was like, I want to write new stories. So I think um, needed a change of pace was, mm-hmm. um, or the entirety of To Men the Sun, that was like kind of a break from that. Okay. And then um, Debt Collector, I think that was like right when everything started shutting down. And I was like, oh, cool. I can just write a bunch of songs that aren't connected and I can just write stories and I'll, it'll be little self-contained things. Mm-hmm. And without realizing they all ended up being like one thing. But yeah. I think in the process of it, a lot of it was just being like, what can I do differently? What can I do to refresh myself? Mm-hmm. And like, I'm just going to make music like that I just want to listen to. Because I think I kind of forgot about that in the process of like trying to make a huge, like big record and I want it to be the yeah. coolest thing in the world. And I forgot that like, you know, I kind of want to just make songs that I would actually listen to. That just exactly. didn't listen to that. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so what song on the EP took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Which took the longest to write? Longest to write? Oh, definitely Bad Luck. Mm-hmm. That was that was one of the only ones that I actually had trouble with. All the other ones came pretty naturally. Like Debt Collector formed super quick. Same with Crows and a lot of the other ones. But Bad Luck um, was like a struggle. I, oh. I started writing it in like March of last year, something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, it just, it changed a lot. Originally it was supposed to be this little like folky, like Italian restaurant sounding type thing. Mm-hmm. And it was just going to be like acoustic guitar and horns. And it was going to be like a, you know, like a big band kind of yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, the more I got into it and the more I released new songs, the more I kind of, you know, I still really believed in the song and really liked it, but I kind of grew out of that one too. And I was like, I don't really, I love this song, but I, I don't know what to turn this into mm-hmm. that like, I really would feel strongly about. I just like, you know, the idea behind it. So that I revisited again earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And it was just a lot of like, just pulling and like really, just getting something out of the song trying to turn yeah. it into like a real thing 
Mm -hmm. Um, And eventually it just, you know, became a song, I guess. All right. Interesting. All right. I never would have put like a folky kind of, as you said, like Italian restaurant. I never would have put that with that song. That's really interesting. It changed a lot. I mean, structure wise, it actually is very similar to how it was before it like started Mm -hmm. with this acoustic guitar thing. Like this song is no different. And like all the horns and stuff would come in. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I was like, let's throw some synth at it. Let's just make it insane. I got really into um, like some like dance music and stuff this year yeah. and i was like oh that'd be a fun combo <laughs> definitely uh, uh, and your personal favorite mm-hmm. Ooh, um either bad luck because yeah, i just i don't know i just kind of fell in love with it because just because just of how hard it was to make mm-hmm. um or pressure bomb three that song Banger. makes me very happy i'm so glad we got to do that how many more versions of pressure bomb will there be <laughs> I I am proud to say that I think probably that that is the last version okay. of Pressure Ball. All right. Okay. The trilogy. <laughs> uh, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this EP and the meaning behind it. Oh, no. My favorite lyric? Yep. Oh, shoot. Um, favorite favorite lyric oh okay well one that comes to mind is um okay yeah so back to bad luck Mm -hmm. that's that's just my song right now Um, but the the part right before the chorus the lyric is um that's okay fortune find your way to someone who needs it much more than me Mm -hmm. and that was um you know, partially like narrative stuff and part of the story and partially just me kind of like, just, um, I guess like channeling something for myself where I was basically just thinking like, yeah, I, I don't always have the best luck. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I, I've always felt like, you know, to rely on luck isn't, um, there's a lot more that you can rely on, I guess, a lot mm-hmm. more tangible, real things like yourself, you know, and, and just doing what you got to do, I guess. So that was a kind of a moment where I was like, no matter how much, like, no matter how many obstacles or like, you know, bad, unfortunate situations I run into, um, like, I don't really need good luck. You know, you could save it for somebody else, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so where was your headspace at while you were writing the CP? Um, everywhere, really. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, all of it happened at completely different times. Like, yeah. The intro track was like a, in like the summer of 2019, you know. The best summer, yeah. <laughs> the summer before it all. Yeah. Yeah, like I wrote that one. That was actually it's supposed to be for the LP, so that was like a big like. Oh. Like I want this to be like a huge like intro track overture type thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I think my headspace was um just increasingly like frantic and like mm-hmm. really just um like on 10 like the more we got closer to release the, the more we worked on it mm-hmm. just because like you know things were happening like stuff was like kind of starting to grow and we were seeing a lot of like changes that was very you know i don't want to say completely unexpected but very sudden i mean mm-hmm. honestly, very unexpected really now that i think about yeah. it so i think the more the more it happened the more like pressure i guess there was and i was like mm-hmm. oh like I, it has to be good i'm people are going to hear it i wanted to, to like do well mm-hmm. so yeah. it, it was you know very very frantic i think and i think it kind of shows in the music too definitely yeah mm-hmm. uh, so what band or artist influences do you hear the most off the cp um let's see i mean there's the obvious ones right mm-hmm. yeah it's mm-hmm. like my chemical romance of course so still, still lots of panic in there that mm-hmm. hasn't okay, okay. gone away yeah, yeah um but i will say there's some places i pulled from that i haven't pulled from before maybe as much like there is a lot of electronic influence which i think has always been a thing but i haven't had the chance to pull from a lot of very heavy stuff before Mm -hmm. now and i think going into like debt collector and then bad luck with all the sims and stuff that was a great opportunity for me to go back to like you know listening to like skrillex and you know going to newer stuff Mm -hmm. really into artists called them um, T T Pazolite or something like that. Interesting. These insane like 
just dance like bangers yeah um, prince daddy i was listening oh, so to them true. a lot when i mm. when i did um pressure mom three oh. it was just like oh, they're so good at making loud songs they, they are. are yeah so, um, wow lots of lots of different places i think okay how, how do you feel about agr <laughs> Oh my god! I heard, I heard, I remember you talked about this oh. last night. Yes, <laughs> last night. Yeah. Yes, I wasn't sure if you had watched it or not because you didn't like any of the tweets. But here we are. Uh, no, we were. I like remember. I saw afterwards that you went live. I was like, guys, let me let me watch this movie YouTube thing real quick. <laughs> me, and, me and Cole watched it. But um, I love ADR. Okay. I think they're really good. I think um, they do a lot of things that I would be too scared to do you know okay yeah mm-hmm. which is um it's interesting i kind of it's this weird like mixed feeling where i watch them and it's almost like secondhand embarrassment mm-hmm. you know but like not because they like failed at anything but just the fact that they attempted it you yeah. know like <laughs> yeah. you ever like watch somebody like really like go out there and do something and you're mm-hmm. like oh wow i wouldn't have done that but good good yeah <laughs> so, yes yeah I, I really admire them for that all right so then you, you know what my comparison courage. my my comparison was then because i definitely did hear it like in your your opener track because they, they do the same thing with their overtures um so that that's where that comparison came up yeah i love good overture i think they they do it really well especially yeah. in the, on the new album mm-hmm. i didn't personally like the new album but we don't have to have that conversation <laughs> right now <laughs> that was one of my favorite ones i love that that's that's I like super the... unfortunate I like the one where it's like they're on a couch on the uh, the cover art. I don't know which one that is, but that's a good one. So that's uh, my I never, got, I never really got into that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's fair. It's all right. That's fair. Um, also, in that same podcast episode, Shane mentioned, he reminded me, actually, that your favorite Panic album is Pray for the Wicked. Do you still stand by that? Mm, I think so. It's get out that one get or out. Death we're not, of the Bachelor. We're not finishing this oh, death of bachelor is a banger so i'll i'll take that i'll take that <laughs> so it's so it's such a good album. i gotta listen to that <laughs> i was listening to it the other day it still slept it, yeah yeah the, oh. i do like the overpass that's a really good song that's off of pray for the wicked because it just it doesn't stop yeah no oh my god the james brown sample and, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. it's good it's good i feel like i should listen to it now but i won't i won't <laughs> Very, but I will. Very well. Um, maybe maybe yeah, she will. There's maybe. definitely there's some direct inspiration on from there on a new album for sure. Okay. <laughs> EP, exa- see? See? No, it's because we're talking about all these albums. Of course, of course. Of course. Um so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this EP for new listeners in three words, no more, no less. Um maximalist. Uh ambitious and um unhinged i think <laughs> unhinged is good that's a good one right. uh so is there a certain f- oh, oh. <laughs> hey. delivery delivery <laughs> yeah i was making dinner before i passed off the baton oh bon joy <laughs> 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 Uh, so is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this EP to evoke in your listeners? Um, I want this EP to evoke the feeling that you can literally do anything. Fight God. I don't know. So but true. Yeah. Just be completely unstoppable. That's that's my hope. <laughs> that's good. good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, you can eat. I know you've got food in the exactly. room. You're yeah, like you staring can, at you it. Can you, you can it's eat. Fine. We, we thought we I'd don't... like go in between questions. Yeah, we, we oh, don't yeah, care. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah. Um. Uh. So picture this: you're on tour. You're at gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Pringles, always. What flavor? What? Um. Honestly, any of them except for pizza. Yeah. But um, yeah. my go-to is usually jalapeno or sour cream. Oh, yeah. Have you yeah. tried rotisserie chicken? I did actually. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. Right? How, I mean, it tastes like rotisserie chicken. Mm-hmm. That's what's weird about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what I thought it tastes like, but. Hot ass. <laughs> I, I thought it would taste like an interpretation of rotisserie chicken. Is that like the oh. seasonings on it? Yeah. This literally yeah. feels like I went to like a grocery store and bought a pre <laughs> chicken. It's that weird. was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. 
Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you created while making this EP? Oh, favorite memory? Oh, that's such a good question. Oh my God, I wish I had thought about this. Um, <laughs> favorite memory? Questions have improved since last time, huh? Mm -hmm. I, this is it's very different from last time. <laughs> I didn't I didn't come with my thinking brain. On. Jesus Christ! Um, damn, favorite memory. Favorite memory. I'm like going through like the songs right now, just trying to like you know run through what's um what's happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'll say I think favorite memory probably has been not necessarily in the making of it, but just in the process of the rollout. I think when actually, no, I have it. Oh, OK. I have it. OK. Mm -hmm. It's not in the production. The favorite memory was the other night, actually, on release night. And I know it's a little little off the question, but I that was um we did a little listening party in the discord mm -hmm. and we got like everybody in there um we thought it was going to be like 10 people in there and like 60 people showed up in our voice chat oh my god Holy and shit. um it was me in there and cole was in there and we listened to the album with everybody um and during it i think like cole was like hey you should like check like how many people are listening to us right now Mm -hmm. and it was like ridiculous it was like almost 300 people or something That's oh my ridiculous. god I, I like lost it so wow and i think that just like was just felt so gratifying after like everything we've like gone through to like make this record and how stressful it's been mm -hmm. how worried we were but like you know who knows what would happen so that that was a great memory i think i'm gonna hold on to that for a long time <laughs> I applaud you for making sure that your Discord didn't explode when 300 people joined the voice chat. Uh, well, okay, on the voice chat, it was still like 60, 70 people. But okay. like on Spotify, it was like that many people. Like... <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. I was like, That's... 300 people on the voice channel might make it lag oh, a little I can't bit. even imagine. Even just that was like, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasn't at all prepared. Um. So what song do you wish you wrote any song in the entire universe we haven't pitched this one in a while so i forgot how to do it <laughs> what song do i wish i wrote any song in the entire universe um welcome to the black parade all the way good answer so true good it's, answer. A good one. it's not even like my favorite mcr song even though it is up there mm -hmm. but it is one that i wish i wrote because it's mm -hmm. just so that good, good. And yeah. it just is everything i want in a song. yeah mm -hmm. yeah Thank you for not being like embarrassed saying that like Welcome to the Black Parade is like one of your favorite MCR songs because oh, it is one what? of like their best songs. Yeah. So it's really good. Who doesn't like Welcome to the Black Parade? Come on. A lot of people for some reason because you know it's their most popular song. You so. gotta hate it because it's the most popular. Exactly. Yeah. So Thank you. I only like Bury Me in Black, the demo version. You know? <laughs> oh. Bury Me in Black does smack. So Emily, demo. Emily. My favorite actually. So They peaked at, at no, they, they peaked for the the demo the bullets demos actually they actually yeah. did yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, so for the last couple questions we're actually gonna shift away from music if that's okay with you awesome <laughs> so if you could become one animal for the rest of your life what animal would you be and why man I don't mm -hmm. know what I want to be an animal the why is very important yeah you have to give us like an essay on or, okay. yeah. I will answer your little question, but I will <laughs> I will make it known. I would okay. answer the animal. That would suck, I think. Mm -hmm. I love being an animal. <laughs> well, but if I had to be an animal, mm -hmm. I would be a cat because <gasps> everybody is nice to you and gives you things and you nobody really expects anything. Cat point. Um, and you could also be an <laughs> asshole back and no one really questions it because you're a cat. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're just you're just you're just ultimately likable. Mm -hmm. That's what I would want to be as an animal. There you, you go. You got a point. That's great. Thank you. Um, so if you could listen to one song for the rest of your life, what song would that be? Oh, mm -hmm. this is very tricky because I feel like unlike a lot of people, it takes a lot for me to get tired of a song. Like I'll listen to a song every day for mm -hmm. sure, but um. 
Okay, am I listening to it on loop for the rest of my life, or is it like yes. it's the only song that I have? No, it's it's the only song that you have to listen. I always to. thought it was on loop. No, you'd go batshit listening to anything on loop. Dude, I've been listening to this one song on loop yeah, for like the past well, like twenty four hours. You are a different breed. We've had this conversation before. Uh-huh. You yeah. your listening habits are unlike anyone I know. They are. It's horrible. <laughs> I've been listening to Industry Baby on loop. Dude, that's literally <laughs> what I'm listening to right now. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> so so I can't stop. It's so good. It's so, dude. That Carlo killed it. He killed Jack, it, oh, dude. Lil Nas. He's Lil Nas X has yet to miss. He can't. Literally, he can't. It's literally impossible. It's impossible. The day he misses is the day the pandemic is over. So we're gonna be here forever. <laughs> nah, but that's that's a good one for sure. I think a song that I could listen to forever though like forever. that's one song i get um maybe mama but my chemical romance there oh you yeah you're a I mama could, stan i could listen to that or, breakdown I, forever yeah and there's just so many sections i'd want to do like a mm-hmm. like a longer song for sure like bohemian rhapsody oh, yeah. and just like have a bunch of moments you mm-hmm. know? exactly yeah. that's good that's a good answer uh so for this last question boom you're on a desert island. You can only bring one person, one movie, and one album. Who and what are you bringing? Whoa. Okay. Mm-hmm. One person. Ooh. That's that's hard. Yeah. I don't know. I love groups of people. That's that's so tricky. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'd have to be my girlfriend. I feel like I would just I miss him. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Then like, if I choose anybody else, yeah. Now what? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is that. Mm-hmm. Um, or Cole. I feel like we could just make songs about being trapped. That'd be good. <laughs> um, okay. And it was one movie and one album? Yes. yes. Oh, shit. Okay. The, the one album would be The Black Parade. Mm-hmm. And it was, okay. Talked a lot about MCR. Yeah. There it's a it banger. Is. That's just, that's that's just, just the theme. Mm-hmm. And one movie. Ooh. Maybe Akira. It's not even my favorite movie, but I feel like it'd be great to rewatch. Like that has some replay value. I think all my favorite movies are like movies that are just really crazy and then they're like over. So I don't know if they'd make a great Desert Island movie. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't like Life on the Murder scene or whatever the, the Black Parade live oh, album. Oh, I, I didn't think that'd count. I love watching Life on the Murder scene. Yeah. I watch it like every mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, it's very good. Um, so as Glory said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Finish the light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are things I'd like to plug. Okay. Um, go l- oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> go listen to our new EP. It's called A Beginner's Guide to Faking Your Death. Um, another thing to plug, I guess. Wait, when is this coming out? In like the next week or so. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, I don't have that many things to plug, actually. Come on. But, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Not going to plug the tapes or the merch or anything? They're not going to be on sale next week. Oh. Oh. It's unfortunate. Well, if you're watching this, you missed out. Sorry. You, missed out. you also missed out on our amazing show in Brooklyn. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just going to assume right now that it's, it's really cool. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. I stack, wish I could go. Line up too. Yeah. It's so sad. I, I also wish you could go. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what, like nine hours away. So <laughs> catch you next I think time. It'd be, I think it'd be worth it. Honestly, yeah. It's just I don't have a license or a car, so I can't. Is it, is it also okay. worth like driving in city traffic? Like, Trust me. It's, is it? It's okay. Bad. There's right. things I can't even say about this show. Oh my god. See, just take that lineup and make it into a tour and come to Virginia. And then, <laughs> uh, and then I'll see a, you. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> Okay. manifesting the tour please all right uh well thank you for sitting down with us been dry and we've been the good noise podcast